All right, so today I want to break down your retention rate and what that means when it when it comes to your business. And it's a very important number you should measure. You should really honestly know what your retention rate is. And it, it's because of a couple of different reasons. One is if you're advertising and you're paying for, you know, advertising and you're getting clients in the door, you have to know your lifetime value of the customer. And the longer you could extend the visits that customer has in your salon, the cheaper the acquisition cost is for that customer. A lot of people don't understand their cost per acquisition for each customer, and then they don't know the lifetime value of that customer. And those are two crucial numbers you need to know. But your retention rate in the service industry, like for a hair salon or for a barber, really breaks down to two different things. It's your personality or the product, right? How good you are at the haircut or the color service that you do. And if you find that people aren't returning, they're not visiting to your chair, it's one of those two reasons. It's either your personality that sucks or your product sucks. You're not good at cutting hair. And it will stem down to obviously the personality of the salon too, like the atmosphere, the feeling, how they were greeted at the front desk. So there's a couple layers to that when you unpack it. But when you talk to your clients, are you making them feel welcome? Are they Do they feel comfortable? Are you hitting all four aspects of the business? Like, are you do you have good customer service? Are you convenient, right? That kind of plays into the personality. But when it comes to you as a stylist and it's just you behind the chair, you're almost, it's like a first date, right? And you have that that client in your chair and you're you're performing at a high level, right? Your conversation is a little different. The delivery of the product and the service is a little different because you're trying to wow that customer their first visit. And then what begins to happen is over time, you begin to drop your guard a little bit, right? You get a little more lazy when it comes to the customer service. They've been to you two, three, or four times. I'm not saying you cut corners, I'm not saying you don't give them 100%, but a lot of times you don't. And so you have to ask yourself, are you delivering the same quality of service and experience the first time they're in your chair to the last time you saw your client? And if, if you think about how many times a client comes to your salon and then they don't come back again, is it one time? Is it two times? Is it three times? Five times? Like what happens? What caused them not to come back again? Typically after someone comes to your salon, it's like, after the fifth visit, it's your client forever unless they move or something really catastrophic happens. Like you you butcher their hair or you fry their hair off. But for you new stylists starting out or for someone who has a new salon, it's important that you have the questions with your clients after that first visit. And a lot of times people will leave you a five-star review. Like a lot of clients, you send, send the email out and they get the email and they check all the boxes down on the right-hand side, five stars for everybody. But that doesn't really give you any valuable information. So you want to ask them, engage in a conversation, whether it's through text, through a phone call, or through an email. Thank you for the five-star review. How can I get six stars? How can I get seven stars? Right? You want to know what you could do above and beyond getting five stars. And a lot of times what begins to happen is they start telling you things that you didn't even know about your salon. You had no toilet paper in the bathroom. Um, it was too cold, too hot. The music sucked. Little things like that. That won't make them not come back again, but it may make somebody else not come back again. So having those conversations to unpack certain things that are going on in your salon that you may not be aware of is really important to help increase that retention rate. So I want you to think about the client experience and be a customer of your own product. Like if you have a, if you had a restaurant, you taste the food before it goes out. Like you're a customer of your own product. If you can't be a customer of your own product in your salon, then hire someone to be a customer for you. Get secret shoppers, have somebody come in, pay for their service and have them go through the whole entire experience. How was the online booking experience? How was the shampoo? How was the experience in the salon? Have them give you real feedback, real criticism. Like you want, you want them to be honest with you. Have them not sugarcoat it. The one thing that more people need to do is be honest with each other, especially when it comes to your business, because if you're not honest with that person who you're using their product or getting their service from they're never gonna be able to get better. The only way to get better is to have honest feedback. So you have to make sure your clients are giving you honest feedback. If you don't have a high retention rate, well, that's feedback for you. That means that two things are wrong, the service or the personality. So if you have a stylist in your salon and for whatever reason, she's awesome at what she does, like you see the product coming out, but her retention rate sucks, it could be her personality. So it's really important you don't pair people up in your salon just based on their skill level. Pair them up based on their personality too. So your initial introduction to a client, they should have a couple questions 
that gear them towards the right stylist, not just on their skill level, but also the personality, because you want to make sure that they match. And to be honest with you, you're much better off matching someone based on personality than skill, because they're going to come back for the person, not just the haircut. Haircut and coloring, it's easy to teach. But likability, that's a little more difficult. So make sure you're doing the um, the homework on your on your clients before they come in so you can pair them up with the best stylist. So just to recap, there is really two reasons why clients aren't coming back to your salon. It's either the service sucked or the personality of the stylist sucked or the personality of the salon. So your front desk, the experience in there, how they were greeted, how they were welcomed, how, how you made them feel right in the salon. So if you have a great haircut, a great product, but they didn't feel welcome, somebody had an attitude either checking in or, or leaving the salon or the stylist in the chair had a bad day, that will make someone not return, even if the haircut was really good. So focus on those two things. If you have a low retention rate, and that should fix it.